projecting, report is on. Alrighty. Okay, so I'm gonna do my own homework assignment um, with the bunny hunter homework assignment. <coughs> um, it starts with a file, so I'm gonna download this file first, save link as, put it in the temp folder. And I'll be doing everything else here from the terminal. So go to the temp folder, tar xzbf, you know, bunny hunter, go to bunny hunter, Oops. and start my code here. All right. So write any code necessary between underscore start and check here. You can write any assembly code as long as you do not change the bytes at label L1. Um, and do not make any calls to any functions. All right, so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and insert the code here. So the idea is we want to look for um, the sequence of bytes. I'm just gonna use a buni here, B-U-U-N-Y, because I misspelled the word. Um, this is gonna be a loop, okay? So we kinda know this has to be a loop because there's no way to do this, well, there's a way to do it, but it's extremely tedious to do it without a loop because you basically have to make the assumption, is this location bunny? Nah, no, okay, move on to the next one. Is this location bunny? So you can end up with a um, really long conditional statement with, let's see, 252 branches, and you can accomplish the same thing, but it's gonna be extremely tedious to do it that way. I'm not gonna do it that way. All right, so this is gonna be a loop, and every time you deal with a loop, you kind of have to think about, okay, when do I get out of the loop? Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to write some you know, pseudo C code first, okay, to represent the logic. Um, I typically cannot think in assembly code in terms of the logic of a program. I can think in C and C++ or higher, you know, high level programming language. So I'm gonna say, you know, while uh, bunny or boony is not found and uh, not end of um, allocated space do the following right and what I need to do here is really just to say hey that's you know plus the point you know add to the pointer okay, so that's the basic code or basic idea of you know, what I need to do now once I have the basic idea of what to do, I look at this while loop and say, well, but there are no while in assembly language programming. So what I need to do is to look for the inverted cases of these things and say, okay, you know, when do I get out of the loop? So I have to think about the exit condition instead of the stay in loop condition. Um, so I would basically convert it into if end of allocated space go to end of while, and I can use that as an actual label name, and of while, I just put it here. Um, and then I check the other condition, if bunny is found, go to end of while. Okay, is that okay so far? Okay. All right, so now I look at, the, look at this code and go, well, but how do I know we are at the end of the allocated space? And by the way, the pointer is not initialized. So what I need to do next is to allocate and use one of the registers as a pointer. Um, since I specify here that EBX you know, would want point to the memory location of the five bytes, the first byte of the five, so I'm gonna use EBX here as well. So I, would, I want to initialize EBX to underscore start. <coughs> nope, L1. And that can be done by just move L, dollar L1 to EBX. Okay, you know, that's the starting location. Now, if I want to find out you know, whether it's time to get out, I will have to compare, do a compare long. Um, some kind of expression as an immediate operand with EBX. Yep, go ahead. What's the reason of comparing like a EBX equals to L1? Say again? What's the sense of comparing like an EBX equals to L1? Um, I don't want to compare that to L1 because that's the beginning, that's the starting point, right? 
because I want to I want to see whether I'm at the point where I cannot find money anymore, and because I know L1 has two fifty six bytes allocated to it, this is what I would use you know to determine that. Now I want to I do, I do not want to do this either because L1 plus two fifty six is too late already. Okay, if EBX is already four only four bytes to L1 plus 256 it's time to get out already because I know it cannot match anymore at that point so I would do a minus 4 here okay and I would say if uh, EBX is above or equal to or not below okay so not below is JNB uh, I would go to end of while because I want to exit at that point is that okay? Now, when you look at the uh, description of the code here, or description of what you're supposed to do, um, I also specify. <laughs> okay, maybe not here, but in the homework description itself, it describes uh, what to do when it's not found, right? So it says right here <clears throat> if the pattern is not found, the code should reach check here with. You know, null in EBX. So that means you know I can do it here, here as well. But since I wanted to write your know, structure code, I'm not going to do that. Okay. All right. So that takes care of uh, what if uh, we are at the end of the allocated space. Now we need to find out. Okay, what about you know looking for the word bunny itself? Okay. Uh, you can com you can use a compare long. Okay, to compare like four bytes all at the same time. Or you can do it, you know, by by byte. Okay, I'm just gonna do it by by byte. It's not a, not a big deal. Okay. Um, how many people read about the other addressing modes, including the based addressing mode? Okay. Now that's a really handy way to do things because you don't need to undo things because the pointer itself is not affected in the process. Okay. So assuming people did not actually read that note and use only the addressing modes that we have talked about so far, that means you, know, you will have to be able to undo it. Okay, so in order to confirm the bunny is found, I'm going to have to compare byte, in this case, okay, to the ASCII code of the first character, which is 62 in hexadecimal, with whatever is in, or whatever EBX points to. That will confirm, you know, the, the, the this is compare, this is confirming the the first byte is B, okay? So I would say, okay, if it is <clears throat> not the case, um, no, I'm gonna have to say, well, let's see, how am I gonna do this? If it is not the case, we want to go to the body of the loop, okay? So JNC to, um, yeah, we'll call it loop body. And we'll put loop body here, loop body. And whatever the loop body has to do, the last instruction of the loop body is to go back to the beginning of the loop. So I will have to go back to the beginning of the while loop. And I might as well just, you know, define it here. Okay, begin of while. Is that okay so far? And you can see that when I write this program, I'm not doing it in a sequential way. I'm doing it more of a, in a structural way. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So what if um, whatever EBX points to is in fact you know six two in hexadecimal? Well, let's bump it up by one, right? You know, add one to it. So we can now add one, add long dollar one to EBX. This is assuming you're not using the base addressing mode. Using the base addressing mode is a lot easier. Okay, that's just much simpler. So then, hmm? sorry. So in a base addressing mode, so just in one plus e. If you use the base addressing mode, you know this is what you need to do. You just do a CMPB one uh, zero x uh, seven five in this case, and then the one. In parentheses, specify EBX. Yeah, so that's this is using the based addressing mode, which is easy, right? Because then you can just say JNZ to loop body, 
and then compare to the next one. Zero x. Uh, since I misspelled the bunny as boonie, two e v x, right? To J N Z to loop on here. C M P B zero x. Uh, what is the next one? Six e. Can we use a base point to address for our next project? Say again. Can we use the base? Point you to can, address? but it's not going to be helpful because the base addressing mode can only use constants as an offset. What you are thinking is the indexed addressing mode. The based index addressing mode is what you're thinking about because you can use one register as the base register, you can use another register as the sure. index register. So that might be helpful. Okay. Or you can just use another register to store a restore point. So if it doesn't match, then you go back to the restore point. That's the other way to do it. Um, body. And this is going to be the last one. Just CMPB dollar zero eight seven nine to four EBX JNZ to um, no. This one is just a JZ because I have confirmed that we did find everything. So this one will JZ to end of while, and then if not, we'll just kind of fall through to loop body where we increment the pointer by one. The pointer is really just EBX itself. So to do this is to add one to EBX. So I'm almost done, okay? I'm done with the loop. I'm done with the initialization. What I have to do here is at the end of while, I have to find out how I got out. Did I, go to, did, did I get to the end of the whole section and cannot find Bunny? Or did I find Bunny itself? So how can I tell whether I found a boony or not? What is one way to do it? Compare EBX equals to uh, 252. To L1 plus 256 minus 4, right? Which is plus 252, right? And the result can either be greater than or equal to or less than, right? So if it is less than, I go to you know another label. So I'll say go to less than and we'll put less than here. Okay, so here it is uh, we got to L1 plus 256 minus 4 which means it's not found. So at this point I just put a 0 into EBX. Is that okay? There's nothing else to do here because we just preserve the value of EBX. Do you yep. have to move zero because we didn't find it. The EBX always be zero, so we didn't move value. Right if it's here. not found, you always want to put a zero into EBX. That is a part of the description here. If the pattern is not found, the code should reach check here the label with zero in EBX. You did not read the instruction. The question is, by the time we get to check here, is EBX going to be a zero? Well, uh, she's saying that uh, she used a different register, then moved it into EBX. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, because EBX has always been zero. So if it, as long as the EBX is a zero, that's fine. But that's not uh, something that you should be able to count on. You, you really should be doing your own, putting your own zero into EBX. I was thinking about those, uh, when I moved to there, I, I debugged it, the, each case, but it's just a find, I just find that that code is like more code that I don't need it, so I moved them out. Because uh, all the case pass through is. Uh, um, I wouldn't debug. have done it that way. You know, I would have used my own code to put a zero into EBX for sure. Next time. Next time. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and test this code whether it works or not. This is going to look for boonie, not bunny. Okay. the The bottom line of you know what I what I was saying is do not make assumptions. Okay. So don't make any assumptions unless the assumption is sound 
and is proven that you can make that assumption. And the assumption that EBX always starts with a value of zero is, okay, it's not proven, okay? It's just that up to this point, you know, all the programs that we have encountered, EBX starts with a value of zero. So I, I would not count on that, you know, when, when I'm working on my homework assignment, especially when the homework assignment says, you know, there's no statement say that you have to optimize it. Okay, so will GDB it? Oh, I forgot to make some uh, test cases. Let's go ahead and make some test cases. So we'll say uh, haystack.txt um, bugs bunny is here. And boony is not, right? Yeah, this is bugs bunny and it's not boony. Can you just skip that and just type it right into the file? Huh? Can you just skip the, the opening bin and just type it into a file? Yeah, I could. But sometimes I do not type correctly and have to go back and fix it. Right? All right, so we'll list the program, put a breakpoint on at underscore start, so I can you know, use that breakpoint to load the file in into L1. So we say restore binary and then the file name. No, oh, the file name first. Uh, and how, what did I call the file name? Basically, text. Haystack, yeah. Okay. Restore haystack binary to L1. Oh. So L1. <coughs> and okay, the question now is should I just go ahead and execute this program until it gets to check here? Let's be brave and give it a try. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and continue execution. Now it gets to check here. And we want to check EBX, and it should be what? Zero. Should be zero. Okay. So print EBX. It is zero. So that's it. Does work for this case. Let's run it again. Oh, not yet. Change the program. Uh, change the uh, tab. <coughs> Paystack. What about? Well, because it's a boonie, it's not a rabbit, right? <laughs> All right, so we'll restart the execution of the program. Now we start, it's stopping at underscore start. We'll use restore again to restore uh, haystack in binary format to wherever L1 is. Continue the execution of the program. Print EBX. Oh, it is zero again. Okay. Oh, okay. So it, it does work correctly then. We don't know for sure yet. Oh yeah, I use B U uppercase B. Okay, there we go. Rerun the program from the beginning. Another restore from Haystack to the address of L1. Um, continue execution. Print EBX. Looks like it's correct, but we don't know for sure, right? So one, there are several ways to find out whether this is the right location or not. Um, I would just use the X command. Okay, so I'm just going to use you know X slash five BC, five bytes listed as characters. Okay. Um, and then we'll just use EBX as the address, and it is B U U N Y. So it does work. Are there any questions? Okay, what about uh, people who do not use um, the based addressing mode? Because, you know, without the base addressing mode, it gets a little bit more clumsy because you have to restore, you have to add one to the pointer every single time, and then you have to find a place to restore that, right? So let's find out you know, what to do when we do not have the base addressing mode. 
So without the base address in mode, I cannot do something like this. Instead, well, there are, there are several ways to do it. Um, one way to do it is to copy EBX into another register, let's say ECX here, okay? And then you just add one to ECX. So now you can use ECX instead of EBX. For the next instruction, same thing, add one to ECX, because ECX is just a running pointer, and I can keep doing this for all of the other instructions. Add one to ECX, and refer to ECX here, add one to ECX, and then use ECX here. So that's one way to do it, is to make use of another register, so I don't have to worry about restoring back to the original point. Yep. What happens to the registers during time slicing on a processor? That's a very good question. Okay. Um, it is a little bit out of the scope of this class, not only this particular class session, but also this entire CISP 310. But I want to give you the answer because you know, obviously you have thought about that. Each process has its own quote code, has its own set of registers. So, you know, at a time slice event, you know, which means you know the processes, processor says, oh, this process has taken up 10 milliseconds to execute already. It's time to let another process run. So what the what the kernel would do is it will save all the registers, the content of all registers, physical registers of this particular process onto the stack of this particular process. And then it will go through a list of other processes that are ready to run. And using some sort of prioritization scheme, it will find the next one to run. And it will go to that process. And it will res first, it will restore to the stack pointer of that process. And then it will restore the content of all physical registers from the stack of the process to be resumed. And then it will continue execution in the other process. In other words, you only have one set of registers. Yeah. Logically, you only have one set of registers. Every time you do time slicing in a multi-process environment, uh, every time you do a time slice or every time a process voluntarily give up control, it will save all the registers onto the stack so that the next process will be able to run. And you can restore that you know, when this process is ready to run. Now that's getting into uh, you know, basically the, the basics of uh, multi-processing. It's actually multi-threading. Every thread has its own set of registers, but I'm just going to refer to it as multi-process in this case. Good question. All right, so, yes? Can you add one more test case because I did it in different ways. So can you do like B, U, N, N, and no space, no anything, also B, B, U, N, N, Y, try what we have? So B U U N B U N Y. B U N N continue B U N N Y. Yeah. Bun. 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 Okay. So. Alright. Fine. Uh, okay. Tell me what 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 pattern do you want? Bun. Just put a B U N N in front of. B U U N. B U N N. And so then continue B U. Because yeah. we are using bun, so well, since I'm using bun, yeah, there you go. it would not have it would not affect my code at all because I'm sequentially comparing the five bytes. Yeah, because I I saw you use my code would not get confused. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's give it a try because I just made some changes yeah. to the source code, so yeah. I wanted you know make sure that. The changes that I made to the source code is also going to be okay. Yeah, I think you are going to shoot it. Put a breakpoint at uh, underscore start. Put another one at check here. Run the program. Restore haystack in binary mode to the address of L1. Continue execution. EBX should. Oh, it didn't find anything. It is supposed to, right? Um, I had run into the same problem when I was doing it because um, find a character that is not in the order of boonie, mm -hmm. then you increment, but 
Booney is in there. It's just that you skipped the first character because it wasn't what you were expecting it to be. Doing a long comparison. This, this in that structure, you right, but you should, but you should, went to but the, the question is, you know, how how are you incrementing the pointer? You should not be incrementing by four. You should only increment by right. one. Yeah, if it's one word, it's right. a four word program. But um, so so there was boon, right? Mm -hmm. And so the next character you were expecting was Y, but it was B. Right. And so since it was wrong, you incremented once more, correct? In your code. As long as you increase the white. Well, okay. The the, the, yeah. the reason why my code is not working at this point is because I'm of the earlier change that I made. So I I need to you know debug that one first. Let, let's let's debug that one first, and then. Oops. So this case will have big impact. If we are going to test this case for the next homework, it's hugely different. Code that we have to mm, do. Well, the next one ha needs a double loop, so you know that's what you need for the next homework assignment. Okay, so let let me let me fix this program first. <clears throat> okay, so I put you know, I compare six two to ebx, I copy ebx to ecx, add one to ecx, and then compare seven five to it. Oh, okay, I forgot to take out all the uh, base addressing mode. No wonder it's not working. My bad. Uh, put a break one at uh, underscore start. Another one at check here. Run the program. Uh, restore. I should have written a script to do this, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, restore haystack. Binary mode to the address of L1. Continue execution. Print dbx. And this time it is there x slash 5 pc um, dollar ebx and it is boony it finds it correctly the other way to do it you know, to compare like four bytes first should work as well i cannot think of why that would not work you have to restore it okay do, did you check the first byte the first four bytes first or did you check for the b first I checked for the B first, so I, for the B I first. had fixed it to, um, I, I didn't have a problem anymore, but this, this test case where you put B U U N mm -hmm. and then B U U N Y, mm -hmm. my code initially didn't get it because I wouldn't increment each time it was not the character I expected. So it was, a after I had found the N and that was correct, mm -hmm. I was checking if it was a Y, and since it was not a Y, it was a B. I went ahead and incremented next, which placed it at the U, but then I'm checking for B again, because I'm checking for the first character to find that right. first address. So that's why I was I was getting it wrong. I see. Okay. But you found out, you know, about the problem. You fixed yes, it. yeah, I fixed yeah. it. Of okay. course. That's good. Any other questions? I mean, any other tricky cases you guys wanted to test with this program. Well, let's make it even more, you know. So we'll we'll do a B and then B U B U U <laughs> and then B U U N and then Boonie. Okay, so we basically have all the substrings here. Okay, all the Yep. I noticed if you don't put a cap on it, you'll find money anyway. You'll just keep tra uh, traveling through the RAM until it finds checks money. Yeah, but if bunny isn't isn't in the file, then don't you get a segmentation fault? No, it, it, it continued on past its memory, the, the allotted memory for the program. Not in this case, because it will no, stop. I mean, uh, no, uh, it, I was testing mine without a cap. Uh -huh. uh, I had uh, the cap ready, but I didn't implement it. Uh, but Do I you just, know why? I just checked to see what would happen, and it went through and just found the file name. Oh, okay, because, you know, because because what you see, you know, as a part of a program is not the entire memory space. There are other portions of the memory space that is used for ARGC and ARGB, you know, the number of arguments and also the parameters that are supposed to be passed to your program. So he stepped, basically he stepped onto that chunk of memory 
where the name of the executable is stored. And as a result, you know, you'll be able to find, you know, anything that is a part of the file name. <laughs> I have no idea how it is done in assembly, but I know how it's done in C. It's ARGC, you know, which is the number of arguments, and then ARGV, which is an array of strings. So you can actually get to the arguments of you know, what you run the program. Right. So, are there any questions about um, this demonstration? Both versions, you know, the one that used the base addressing mode and the one that did not use the base addressing mode. What if I don't want to use uh, ECX? What if I don't want to use up one additional register? So I have to restore the pointer to you know the original value before I add one to it, right? Okay, let, let's go back to that program and, and, and figure out how to do it, okay? There are several ways to do it. So every time I do something like this, you know, I'm basically you know, giving you guys another trick that you can do with assembly language programming. And this is something that you can do in assembly, but not in regular C and C++ programming. In other words, what if I'm not gonna use ECX? So I will get rid of uh, this ECX here, and get rid of the plus one, you cannot uh, take pictures as quickly as I can as I can edit the file, <laughs> but since it's also be getting recorded, assuming I do not overwrite anything, it's going to be okay. All right. So this is not going to work because it's all going to be comparing to the same location, right? So I'm going to have to remember to add one to EBX before the subsequent compares. So we'll say add one to EBX and put it here put it here and put one more here but now we have a different problem because when I do not find you know bunny and it goes to the body of the loop it's just going to add one to EBX okay it's okay with bunny okay because bunny itself does not have B in it so there's no um, there's no need to restart from the beginning okay or just one byte off okay but depending on the search pattern, sometimes you know, that can happen. So one way to fix this problem is not to go back to loop body, but instead I have loop body one, loop body two, loop body three, and this one is quote unquote loop, loop body four. So loop body four and three, two, one, three, oops. Three, two, so one. Yep. J and Z is equal to jump if it's not equal to zero. Mm -hmm. Not equal to zero means it does not match, right? So with each one, I can now say subtract one from EBX. Now it will restore, you know, the original value of EBX. So it's just a trick you can do. You can do this easily in assembly language programming, but not in C. You know, in C, you cannot control the entry point into the loop body. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, J and Z and J and E, they are similar. Like a jump. They are the same. J and E and J and Z are uh, synonyms to each other. They are basically the same thing. Yep. Is there any functional benefit to, to not using that additional register? Um, sometimes, you know, because we only have so many registers, and it really helps to minimize the use of registers, especially when you need to use that register for something else. Um, because if you use you know, a, a register you know, just like that, um, sometimes you run out of registers, because registers are the only thing you can do when you want to use an indirect operand. And if you have enough stuff, enough pointers that you have to track, you want to keep all of those in registers if if possible, right? So for something like this, you know, where I can avoid the use of another register, doing it this way will basically, you know, give me, you know, I don't have to swap things in and out all the time. So in this program, obviously, it's not an issue because, you know, I only use up one of four general purpose registers, and I have three additional registers that I can play with. 
but in general, if you want to minimize the use of registers, you know, sometimes it's a good thing to do. But I'm going to test this program again just to make sure that this modification is also going to work. So assemble, link, and GDB. Put a breakpoint at uh, start. Put another one at check here. Run the program. Uh, restore paystack binary to L1. Continue the execution of the program. Print EBX. And we want to do an X slash 5 bc dollar evx and ah it's not working this time uh, it did not restore to the uh, to the correct point this is the uh, the last byte of bunny it did not oh that's right because i did not uh, the evx itself is is off okay i got it okay so that means i have to go back and fix the program right That's okay. Once I determine in the conditional statement after the loop, now I can say, you know, this one will jump to check here to jump around the else block. And then in the else block, I'm going to do a subtract long dollar, I think it's four. Yeah, because I have to go back four bytes, you know, from the U back to the B from EBX. That should do it. This is right. It looks right to me. Um, but we'll double check. Yep. So it goes all the way back to Boonie. It it has to do with you know I'm using EBX to track everything. So by the time I confirm it is actually Boonie, EBX is pointing to the last character of Boonie when it got up when it got out of the loop. But the homework assignment wants EBX to point to the beginning of Boonie, and that's why I have to. Roll it back by four bytes. All right. Are there any questions about this? And this one would have no problem if Boonie wasn't in there. Sorry? This one wouldn't have any problem if Boonie was not in the file? Um, should not have a problem with that. Because that one does not exercise the code that I just made changes to. Okay. Um, so we'll, we, can, we can give it a try, right? it uh, check here it's going to be helpful to make multiple test files and then make a script to run each one so I don't have to retype everything by hand. <laughs> that would be a good idea for the new homework assignment because you want to test it with you know, definitely multiple test cases. Right. Any questions? Something for our next project? Hmm? Something related to the next project? Something related to the next project. Okay, very good. Let's implement another string function. Substring. Hmm? <laughs> Substring. String string. String string? Nah. String string is a sub system. I can do string compare. Yeah, string compare is kind of boring though. Hmm? Compare to string string is kind of boring. Compare to compare to string 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 compare is boring. That's a that's quite a statement right there, right? <laughs> well, because like st string string kind of uses like string comparing, but then goes a bit further with it. That's true. It you it it, it does utilize the logic of string compare in string string, um, but you have to be able to restore back to the original point before you check again, before you move forward again. Um, can let's we, see. Can we make it? Located a string and then 
we just find the string in a place and then extract it out. That's why this is find the string there, locate it the, the location and then extract this this whole string. Mm. I think that is a question that you need to answer. <laughs> It's your code. Remember, the, the homework assignment tests your competency. I can do a lot of language. You want, you, oh, you want me there. Just I can't do it in the assembly. I don't think you guys can do it in a minute in any, any programming language. Yes, I can. String, string. You, okay. you want to bet one minute. <laughs> well, you, want to, you, you want to bet? <laughs> the idea, I have something. <laughs> Yeah, well, they have a function. You just it will take me more than a minute to implement this in C. Uh, you, say you need to start it. Yeah. If you just put in a code. <laughs> if I can call string function. compare, it would be a different story. That would be make it. That would make it a little bit faster. <clears throat> okay, I can do uh, maybe string length. String length. It's string not length. More, no, yeah, it's terminator. just counting the number of bytes before the node terminator. Uh, right, oh, look, look terminator, which means look, we can no, do string I'm compare or uh, string copy. Yeah, let's go here. Okay. I don't know. String copy. Nobody cares. <laughs> 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 if it's not string string, I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah. We can do string insert. Huh? There's no string insert. What about concatenation? String cat? Yeah. Well, we can do string cat. Okay, so this is the uh, description of string cat. We are concatenating the source, which is the second parameter, to the first one. Okay? Okay, so let's. We can do it. Like I remember in my data structures class, I had a string cat. Really do that All right, fine. C, but I don't know how to work it in assembly. Okay, sure. We can do that. So we will go ahead and define. This is my destination. Dot fill two fifty six. This is my source. Dot fill two fifty six. And dot text. This is the beginning of my code dot global underscore start underscore start all right so the first thing is i move the labels dst into e ax because that's the first parameter um, source into my second parameter which is in ebx check here is here um, and in this case i'm just doing concatenation okay so to do contact concatenation the first thing i need to do is to find the end of the destination. That's the first thing we need to do, right? So what we'll do is we'll say, okay, while begin is here. Um, compare byte dollar zero, which is the null terminator, with whatever EAX points to. If it is zero, I get out of the loop. while and define end while here. If it is non-zero, I'm going to add one to EAX to increment the pointer. Go back to while begin. So by the time I get to end while, I would have located the null terminator of the destination, at which point I can start the copy. Uh, one question. Uh, how would uh how does the uh, compiler uh, know the difference between that zero as the null character and the uh, de decimal zero or the, the quantity zero? It does not because you know a byte of zero is a byte of zero. So like you compare zero with the EAX, but then like if you were trying to compare with like the number of yeah, characters. It's the same thing. It is the same thing. It is still a byte of all zeros. So the end the value is zero. Huh? It would be uh, that string and the, the part is the minus zero. That's why it's called a null terminator. Um, so like, what if there was like a zero somewhere in the string that uh, wasn't the But goal? that would be the ASCII code of zero, oh, which exactly. is not a byte of zero. Okay, 
So you have, if you look at the uh, the ASCII table, the digit zero has an ASCII code of three zero in hexadecimal, which is non-zero. All right. So at this point, I can do the actual concatenation. And to do the concatenation, so I'm going to say this is the cat begin. Begin. Um, compare zero with EBX, okay, whatever EBX points to, because that's my other string, the one that is supposed to be concatenated to the first one. Uh, if it is the end, if it is a zero, do I want to get out at this point? The answer is yes, we do. Okay. So we want to go to end cat and while. Okay. If not, we'll do the actual copy. So the copy is going to be, cannot do it in one single step because I can only have one, up to one memory operand for each instruction. So I'm going to have to move uh, EBX, whatever EBX points to, go to another, you know, go to CL and then compare a move byte CL to wherever EAX points to, which is the destination. Um, and then I can add one to both pointers, right? So EAX gets incremented, EBX also gets incremented. Unconditional branch back to the beginning of the concatenation while loop. So by the time I get to cat end while, I got one last thing to do because the the destination does not have a null terminator yet okay because i've been copying the non the non null characters so now i need to attach the last byte which is a null terminator so i would just have to do a move byte 0 to wherever e is an ebx eax sorry ebx eax eax let me go. so wherever wherever ex points to that should, that should do it. Alright, that should be string cat. And we'll need a few files to test it. So we'll have um, destination as a file. So I'll say, you know, this is my first name and then a null terminator. Right there. You know, it, you can't really see it, you know, with a editor because it's all kind of dark the text is not easily you know seen but it's there and then we'll have the source as my last name so it's also now terminated control v and then control at all right just to be sure we use a hex dump to dump both the destination you can see the oops, forgot to do a dash c here you can see um, there's a null terminator here, which is right after the space after tap. And then the source <clears throat> has a null terminator right here after the G of my last name. So now we can go ahead and assemble G stabs dash O string cat dot O string cat dot S L D dash O string cat string O, GDB string cat, uh, put a breakpoint at underscore start, put a breakpoint at check here, run the program, and then we use a restore destination.txt binary to destination, do the same thing to source, like so, and double check. Okay, we'll double check you know, 20 BC um, destination, it is TAC, and then source is volume. Okay, so we got the right content into memory. Continue execution. How did you get 20 BC from? What? Where is the 20 BC from? What? How did you get 20 BC? It's going to list 20 bytes as characters. Just from the beginning. It's whatever underscore underscore destination specifies. That's the location. All right. So the moment of truth. Go back to the destination. Does it spell my first name and my last name with a null terminator at the end? And 
the answer is yes, it worked. Any questions about this? But for your homework assignment, I would do it in C first. Okay, I would not start coding in assembly until you have done it in C and have turned the C program into a flattened C program. Then I would start with the assembly code. Sorry, uh, can you go back a little bit? You uh, fix the file, which is the value is the, the first one is the T A K. That's destination. Yeah. So, which is when you can't if I only need a T A K, how how can we? String cat works with. Is co you're concatenating the second string to the end of the first string. Second string. And destination is the first one. So the destination. So is the I'm first appending one. my last name to my first name. There's a first while loop to find the end of the destination, and then the second loop copies the second string to the end of the first string until it hits the end of the second string. Nothing new in this program that we haven't talked about. It only has instructions and conditional branch and labels that we have already seen before. So the first thing to do is to understand this program. I mean that's really kind of important. If you because by understanding this program, it will give you some tools that you need in order to implement your homework assignment. Your homework is going to be a little bit more complicated because you need a double loop and you need to restore to a certain point if you cannot find the substring. So you will need to do a little bit more than this. But three registers should be enough to do the homework assignment. I'll leave it up to you to find out how to implement the program. So if we don't use a counter, we will restore. So that would be on some, like on exam day? Hmm? That project be on 14th? Sorry, say again? Test it. The next project is due on 14th? Next Tuesday. The project is due next, next Tuesday. week. Yeah. And then test them also. Test them. And doing the project is good study. Most people don't think that. You know, they, <laughs> they don't think homework assignments are related to you know tests. But in this class, it is. It has everything to do with the test. Well, don't look at this code. This is not going to be that helpful to your homework assignment. You got to think about you know the algorithm for string string first, and then convert it into the flattened you know version of a C code, then convert that into assembly code. That is the, that's the recommended process. Yep. I, I, you, I, I have to take a look at uh, this real quick. Uh, sure. okay. Let me stop the recorder first because I, I think this part is all done. So I will stop the recorder and